Hello, hello, hello. I'm Spectrum Dominus, and this is episode one of Above or Below Solo Movie List. Now, before we get too far in, I do want to make something clear that I don't believe I mentioned in the introduction video, and that is this solo movie list is movies that I have never seen. Now, I have lists for movies I've seen several times. I have lists for movies that I want to see again. But this list is a list of things that are slightly more obscure and or were really good, but I just didn't have the time or find a way to fit them into my schedule, and now the time has passed. Uh, some complete classics on the movie list, some just blockbusters that I never made it to, and then some, like I said, indie-type, independent, uh, obscure things, like some of the movies we I started out with. So I wanted to make that clear so that people aren't saying, hey, make sure you stick Armageddon in there. Yes, I've seen Armageddon. I've seen Armageddon a million times. Uh, this will all be stuff that I've never seen. Uh, I will have another list for that, and I may do an episode for it some. But for now, we're going to go forward with this. If you are joining us for the first time, make sure you're checking out the introduction video, which will be posted below in the description. Um, it will explain to you in that video all eight episodes that I am doing and the different topics in each. Uh, it'll tell you about the Above and Below website, uh, how it works, and how you can get involved with these videos. And uh, also it tells you how the series is going to play out, how we're going to do the ranking and why it works the way it does. Now, um, as the series goes on, each of these videos will be getting a little bit longer than the previous one. And the reason being that we'll be ranking one movie against all the movies we've previously ranked. So as in the series goes on, we'll have more movies to rank them again. That being said, uh, this movie, or this uh, video will be an exception to the rule because one, I will not be giving all these uh, instructions at the beginning of all the videos. And two, uh, we'll be ranking two movies against each other. It'll be one ranking, but we'll have to go through two movies instead of just the one movie uh, because we ha need two movies to start off the ring. So that being said, let's move forward and uh, start with the solo movie list. We have What If, a rom-com from 2013 starring Daniel Radcliffe, and Mortal Instruments, City of Bones, um, a young authors movie. I, don't, I think they call it young authors or, or teen novelizations or something uh, in the vein of a Harry Potter or or Twilight, uh, they try to make a series out of it in 2013, starring no one that I'm aware of. So, I watch these two movies, and before I get into ranking them, I do want to make something clear about mo ranking movies against each other. I've asked people to rank movies against each other many times in my life, and one of the most common responses I get is, I can't rank this versus that. I don't know. One's a comedy and one is a horror movie. And they're not the same and I like them equally. I can't really judge it. Well, I, personally, I find that to be somewhat of a cop-out. If that's how you feel, I, I'm sorry if I offended you with that. But my thought process is I am aware that if I find these two movies to be very close to each other on the same entertainment level, that I'm going to rank one higher than the other depending on my mood. If I am in the mood for a horror movie, then I'll rank the horror movie higher. If I'm in the mood for a romantic comic comedy, then I'll rank the romantic comedy higher. However, that doesn't mean that that's the one I like better. And there's a way to kind of feel that out, at least for me. And what I tell myself is, as of right now, without getting a chance to see it again, one of these two movies are gonna get deleted from existence. I'll not be able to find it online, there will be no black market copies. If you own it in your DVD collection, it will instantly just disappear and you will never get to watch it again. The other one will still exist, then you can watch it at any time. Which one do you keep and which one do you delete? And if you answer that question, then the one you keep is the one that gets ranked higher. That's, that's how I look at it. I don't care if I'm ranking Nightmare on Elm Street versus Meet the Fockers. One of them I would more likely delete than the other, and that one pushes it against. So 
With that mindset, if movies get close to each other, I'm not going to explain that every video, but that is how, and I may explain it if I come up to that, that chance, uh, that situation, but I don't think we have that situation. So moving forward with this, first was what if. Uh, it says best rom-com since 500 Days of Summer. Uh, I can see the, the relationship that they put there. It was very 500 Days of Summer-esque. The banter between the characters were, to me, the best part of the movie. Every time uh, Daniel Radcliffe and I don't even know her name uh, were talking uh, on screen, it was, it, was, it was enjoyable. It's what I wanted to see. And when they broke up and told storyline with them apart, I was like, okay, this is very textbook. The movie itself was very textbook. Um, guy and girl meet. Guy and girl are instantly attracted to each other and have uh, the witty banter that tells all the viewers they belong together. Uh, girl has a boyfriend already, asks the boy to be her friend. Boy says, yes, I'm fine with that. Truly, he's not because over their many years of being friends, they, or I don't even know many years, but months at least, of being friends, they, uh, he clearly falls in love with her. He lets her know this at the wrong time. It causes a problem towards the end of the movie. And then, you know, it plays out the way it plays out. I don't want to spoil it for you as it is, but it's very, very textbook. I could go and never, I could go for the rest of my life and never see it again. I could go the rest of my life without suggesting it to someone. I glad I saw the movie. It was, it was enjoyable. It was an enjoyable experience and now it's gone. Um, the second movie, Mortal Instruments City of Bones, was, like I said, one of those Harry Potter, Twilight, thought processes that played out more like Percy Jackson. It was not successful. In fact, it was so unsuccessful that they canceled the second movie, and now they're trying to resurrect it as a TV series, I believe. I didn't hate it as much as I thought I would based on what I heard about it. I knew nothing about it. Percy Jackson, I knew a little about. Harry Potter Twilight, I knew a lot about. Um, you couldn't shut people up from talking about these things. So I knew about them. I knew about Harry as a wizard. I knew that she had to choose between, uh, Bella had to choose between Jacob and, and Edward. I knew one was a vampire. One, I, I knew that Percy Jackson was some, they were all in mythology and they were the gods and this and that. I knew nothing about this. Uh, so I had, my expectations were a little lower because of that. And at the same time, I didn't find it to be that horrible. I find myself wanting a second movie. The premise was, again, not completely new. Uh, main character is from a different type of world. This is a world where vampires and werewolves and all sorts of demons and demon hunters exist. The normal humans don't see it or know about it. She is not a normal human, but she's been raised as a normal human, so now she's coming of age that she finds out about this stuff and she's sheltered and she doesn't know it but she also happens to be one of the powerful so it's very common story nothing nothing to write home about again but i found more enjoyment from it because i thought it was well done i thought the acting wasn't horrible and it was a bunch of actors that i never heard of so i don't sometimes i'll get pulled out of a movie for example what if when harry potter is there and I'm like, he's Harry Potter. And, and you just have so much trouble pulling that character out of his old role. There was no one in this movie that could do that to me. And the fact that it kept me in the movie with all these actors that I'd never heard of before, never seen since as far as I know, um, that, was a, that was a plus for me. I a enjoyed the action. It wasn't, it wasn't born identity action. It wasn't like super sophisticated fight sequences. But it was it was neat the use of of the different creatures at different times the the stuff they were setting up for future movies that you could see her best friend got he went and saved him from a den of va vampires and he finds out he was bitten the movie ends without them ever bringing up the fact that he was bitten I could see them setting that up for future episodes uh, he wakes up from being not not you know, from being bitten, from being dragged out. No one realized he was bitten except for her. 
he doesn't need his glasses anymore. That's very weird. Well, it's kind of Spider-Man-esque, and he got powers now, and so he can see. But no one realizes it. By the end of the movie, it never really comes into play. So I could see how they were setting stuff up for the next movie, and I was looking for, I would be looking forward to it, except there isn't going to be. All in all, I give both movies the... Um, I'd say What If is in the five to six reigns. It was a different, uh, it was definitely an enjoyable movie for a rom com. Like I said, not anything special. Modal Instruments, I would push a little higher, maybe 6.5. It wasn't in the elite level of 7.5, you know, the final quarter, 7.5 to 10. But it's, it, it was, it was a, approaching the, it was good to enjoyable, really good. So I'd say right about 6.5. So as, as you heard, Mortal Instruments is going to go above what if. Now, to give you a quick refresher from the video, all I got to do is click whichever one I like more, which was Mortal Instruments, and the website will kick out a video for me to watch, and that will be the next uh, video I watch for episode two. So here we go. Mortal Instruments is above video, uh, what if. And we will be continuing with Spy, starring Melissa McCarthy. I've never seen that, and I have a friend who's been begging me to see that, so he'll be happy when I tell him today that that's the next one. So, uh, next time, we'll be reviewing and ranking Spy against What If and Mortal Instruments City of Bones. Thank you for joining today. Uh, click like if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe if you want to know when more videos come out. Uh, check out the description for all eight episode ones. And uh, for the above and below link for this um, video, I mean this uh, list, if you'd like to rank it yourself. Uh, you can also comment if you agree or disagree with my rankings or, or my uh, evaluation of the movies. And if you'd like to see me add an item to the list or like to me to evaluate a specific list type, um, leave them in the comments and I'll either comment back on why I can or cannot do that or I'll make the list and I'll start another episode series. So um, until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Spectrum Dominus.